Welcome back to yet another Doctor Who Thoughts video, this time it's on Legend of the Sea Devils, because obviously that's the episode that just came out, like, I mean what else would I be doing the video on at this current time, you knuckleheads? So the long awaited return of the Sea Devils, who haven't been seen on TV since 1984. Was it worth the hype? Um, 50-50 I'd say to be honest. I don't know whether it's just because it's the Sea Devils coming back after so long and they've been overhyped so much over like, the last 20 years by this point. I don't know whether expectations were higher than what they really should have been or whether the episode generally just was kind of a bit meh, but I don't know, it kind of fell a bit flat and was a little disappointing compared to what I think everyone was thinking it was going to be. I think that might partly be down to the hype, but uh, well, to be honest, there's quite a few iffy points that I kind of popped into my head while watching it, so it, let's just go through some of the negative points now and get them done out of the way, which, shall we? Right, so in terms of the negatives, I think there were some pretty blatantly naff uh, examples of exposition that didn't really need to be there. Plot was a little convoluted, at least in the beginning. I, it's, it's a nice idea, but I think execution could have gone a little bit smoother. Editing wise, well, I mean, this one's pretty fucking choppy in terms of the editing, I gotta say. There's literally points where I was like, is there a scene missing here? Like, especially the bit where the Doctor and Yasuo in the TARDIS and he gets swallowed by the Sea Devil's pet sea monster thing, and then we cut to a scene with Dan and uh, the pirate people, and then back to the scene with the Doctor and Yasuo, and all of a sudden they're in the Sea Devil's underground base, and they didn't really, you know, even a line of, you didn't even need to show that in a scene, just a quick line of dialogue just mentioning something about how they got down there would have been nice, because it was kind of jarring having to put that the two and two together like that, when there was like no clear indication of how they went from being gobbled up by a sea monster to then suddenly being in an underground base. Would have been nice if we'd had at least some kind of explanation there without having to think for like five minutes and then finally realise, oh okay, that was a bit sloppily done. I'm pretty sure I noticed like a couple of reused shots as well, but they just flipped it round and maybe even a couple of shots that were filmed in completely different scenes and just slotted in for like a second just to have like a reaction shot of a different character. I, I, I might be bullshitting here or we'll just being com a completely delusional twit, but I I'm sure I noticed something like that a couple of times at least. I also kind of wish the Sea Devils were in it more, like they didn't, most of the activities happened off screen and you know, for an episode called Legend of the Sea Devils I feel like they should have had a bit more of a presence. Yeah, oh well. This was literally made you in a fucking plague outbreak so I can't really, I guess I've got to give it some kind of leniency but still a bit more Sea Devil action would have been nice. Resolving the plot also kind of got a bit rushed through as well, although that's kind of standard procedure for this era, I think, by this point. Oh, uh, yeah, the Doctor and has just run off to go 300 years in the past and leave Dan on his own. Like, I know the characters are probably thinking of the whole, like, always capable enough and we'll, we'll be back in, like, five minutes anyway from his point of view and we'll pick him up in a minute, he'll be fine. I have never before seen the Doctor so just, like, content to just abandon their companion in a completely unfamiliar time zone to them without even going to check on them or anything like that like that's across any of the regenerations that's the first time the Doctor's ever been so just happy to just abandon a companion all of a sudden that seemed a little off not gonna lie i think moving away from the negatives now because i think that pretty much is all i have to say it's all i can think of at the moment anyway everything else was just Anything, any other negative points I can say will probably just be nitpicking at this point and I can't really be bothered to do that right now. Uh, oh yeah, very quickly before I forget, uh, obligatory mention the character stuff, although to be honest, they haven't, characters haven't really changed at all from like the previous six episodes in this series so far, they're all good, I like them all. I like that for once they're actually wearing period dress as well, like actual outfits of the time period they're visiting, because we haven't really seen that. I think barring a couple episodes in series 12, we've not actually properly seen companions wearing time period appropriate clothing since like the Hartnell era, so that was good that they at least put in the effort for that. Doesn't really make up for the pretty butchered editing to be honest, but hey I'll take any pluses I can get. <laughs> sea Devil's design and the voices, I think we're yep. Yeah, pretty good. I feel like I was expecting more from them from a design point of view, but then I couldn't really tell you exactly what I was expecting. I don't know how to explain that. Sea Devil's design in this uh, gets uh, easily 7.5 and we'll just call it a day for that. As expected, we had a much more in-depth exploration of the whole Phasmin ship thing. In all honesty, I'm kind of neutral on the whole thing, I, I don't really care. I've never been a fan of the whole Doctor's companion romance thing, except for the 8th Doctor, because, I don't know, just it just works for him. But when they did it with 10 and 11, I wasn't a big fan. And here, I mean, I don't love it, I don't hate it, I'm just neutral on it. 
I just think it's kind of evil of them to be putting the whole this whole thing out there of them wishing it lasted forever when we know Thurian's only got one more episode left. Blatantly, they're just trying to be evil with the irony on that one, and um, at the end of the day, I don't really care either way, to be honest. And in other news, my uh, toy Sonic has run out of batteries. The batteries are expensive, okay. Donate me batteries or I will come to your house and eat all your biscuits. I know where you will live. <laughs> Where'd I get to? Okay, let's go on to, I guess, some positives about the episode, shall we? Right, where are we at? Right off the bat, I think, plot and premise, on their own at least, were really strong, but like I mentioned earlier, they kind of butchered a bit in the whole editing. It's nice to have a bit of a different setting for a change as well, rather than like, present day Earth. It's nice to have a historical episode with pirates in China for once, so that's a bit of a nice setting. That point ended rather abruptly. Uh, moving on. Dan's costume was funny. Uh, I'm gonna just put that in there because I don't know exactly where else to mention that. Dodgy pacing and choppy editing aside, I did at least enjoy this for yeah you know, for what it is. You know, its entertainment value was at least there for me. I don't tend to take a lot of these episodes all that seriously, at least not from a critical standpoint. Anyway, so I enjoyed it. Also, side note: as someone who's very philosophic, I really didn't like some of the scenes with that massive fucking sea monster. Good job, guys. I fucking hate whoever's idea it was to include that in the episode. So frick you. And have a good day. <laughs> Even though a lot of the editing in the episode was very choppy, one place where this actually worked to the advantage was the whole battle sort of sword fight scene on the ship. Like all, like all of the physical activity going on there and the editing and everything, it's just that, that was a really good scene. I like that. That was well done. That was probably one of the best and most well made parts of the episode for me, I think. Uh, and I think beyond that, the rest. It probably just boils down to me going, I was entertained while watching that for like 55 minutes. I enjoyed it. There's a lot of very <laughs> good reasons why I'm not becoming a, 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 a TV critic of any sort. Like asking a hamburger what it thinks of spaghetti. <laughs> Fucking nothing, it doesn't have a brain. Depending on my mindset, I'd probably give this one either a s anywhere between a 6 to a 7 out of 10, depending on which parts. I was hoping for something more, but even though what we did get was kind of a disappointment, I'm still going to say it was entertaining at the very least if you don't take it too seriously. So I guess I should get talking about the trailer for the Centenary special. Well, oh boy. There was a lot going on in there, wasn't there? Stuff we've seen before quite recently, Daleks, uh, Master coming back of course, which is kind of a given. Uh, Kate as well. Who, I just hope they have Kate in this more than what she was in the main series from earlier on. If you've seen my videos on uh, series 13 episodes 5 and 6 then you know what I think about Kate's appearances in those episodes that didn't need to be there. Wasn't even acknowledged the entire time. I just hope the hell they bloody use her properly in this fucking last episode. Uh, Cybermen are back and Lone Cybermen at that. I, I don't know how he's coming back because he got fucking shrunk down into a tiny plastic action figure at the end of series 12 and then blown up on Gallifrey, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to happen, but uh, we'll see. Also, um, little message to the BBC. You can't just put fucking Tegan and Ace in the trailer for the next episode and then expect us to wait six months for it to drop. How can you do this to me? You people are evil, I tell you! But yeah, on the flip side, Tegan and Ace are coming back, so uh, did not expect that. Could this get any more fan service I don't know. And then of course the whole ominous uh, imminent regeneration stuff coming in as well, especially towards the end there. Can't really be bothered to try and speculate what that's going to be, because it could be any number of things, but uh, I guess for now we'll just call it the whole life sucking cubicle of doom. So that twas my scattered thoughts on the Easter Special Legend of the Sea Levels. I am now going to go away and spend the next six months trying to contain my squealing fanboyism over certain shots in that trailer. Let me know your thoughts on the episode down below if you decide to comment. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be back with another video whenever the next one comes out. And I'll be da -da -da. You know, I'm not even going to bother trying to do another take on the outro. You, I say the same thing at the end of every video. You should know what I say by now, so yeah. Goodbye. Look at my foot, my foot is amazing.